In Massachusetts, probation can be violated in one of two ways. Number one, there could be a technical violation. And number two, there could be a new criminal charge, which would act as a violation. So a technical violation is when the probationer is ordered to do something. Um, go to substance abuse meetings, uh, remain within a certain region, um, not go into certain areas, whatever it may be. If the probationer violates one of those conditions or does, fails to comply with one of those conditions, that creates a technical violation. And another form of violation would be a new crime. If the probationer is charged with a new crime, that, of course, is a probation violation. If either of these arises, what will happen is the probation officer will issue a notice to surrender. The notice will be, if it's a technical violation, the notice will likely be mailed to the probationer. However, if the probationer is arrested on a new charge, the notice will be handed to the probationer um, either at his arraignment for the new charge or at some point uh, leading up to the arraignment. For um, a violation of probation to go before the judge, because only a judge can determine whether a violation occurred or not, there will be two hearings. The first hearing is what's known as uh, the detention hearing, where the probation officer will present evidence uh, and just show the court that there is probable cause to have a probation violation hearing. So that'll, that'll occur, the detention hearing. If there's probable cause, then there will be a probation violation hearing. Now at that hearing, uh, the probation officer will present evidence. Uh, witnesses can be brought in. And the defendant or the probationer will have an opportunity to present a defense. So he can present his own evidence. He can uh, confront witnesses against him. He can cross-examine witnesses. And he can have a lawyer there uh, making the case for him. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that um, this is not a trial. So all of the uh, procedural protections uh, that, the, that a defendant would ordinarily have, the probationer does not have. And one of the biggest things is hearsay which wouldn't be allowed at trial, is allowed at the probation violation hearing. However, the hearsay has to be substantially reliable. So it has to be something more than what was overheard um, outside of court. Okay, it has to be uh, a statement that was made under the pains of perjury, or there has to be some circumstances surrounding the hearsay statements that make it, um, make it substantially reliable. Uh, so at this hearing, if the judge finds that probation has been violated, the judge can do a number of things. Um, he can essentially do nothing, release the probationer uh, with the existing terms, which is unlikely, but it, the judge could do that. The judge could modify the terms of probation add additional conditions uh, if he chose to, or uh, probation can be revoked and the petitioner could be sent to jail. If you have questions uh, about probation violation, please send me an email or send me a message.